but I, it's never been explored, so I'm kind of talking off the top of my head. I don't think anyone's ever studied it. But there is, uh, in a good part of Europe, and I think that's probably true of Holland too, from what I know, uh, there's a string, there's an important residue of the, uh, of the Nazi occupation. Uh, fact of the matter is that in Northern and Western Europe, uh, there was tremendous collaboration, much less true in Southern Europe. Now, when, when people think about the resistance, what they think about is the Maquis, you know, the French resistance. The French resistance was a brave, honorable, you know, courageous people, and extremely small. Uh, 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 most French intellectuals just were out of it. Uh, Malraux, for example, was... Uh, I think at a chateau in southern France somewhere. Uh, in Paris, there was a very lively cultural life going on. I think there were probably more books uh, published under the Nazis than uh, pre preoccupation. I mean, the Germans had a, a kind of respect for Paris. You know, they respected French culture, and they also wanted, they were somehow uh, showing their, the Nazi intellectuals and you know, even the military officers their own cultivation by permitting French culture to survive. And there was a kind of a tacit uh, cooperation and interaction. So there was a very courageous resistance, no doubt. And there was plenty of sympathy and people suffered, but uh, most of the society was collaboration. Uh, and uh, all kind of complicated reasons, but it happened. That's radically different from, say, uh, uh, Italy, uh, uh, Greece, uh, Yugoslavia. I mean, there there were huge partisan movements. I mean, they like in Italy, the uh, resistance was holding down six Nazi divisions, and in fact, they liberated Italy. The, the French, the American, and British forces that kind of moved up from the south, starting in 1943, they actually had to throw out the resistance and restore the traditional society, uh, which they in fact did. You know, by the time they got to northern Italy, they were destroying uh, uh, worker-owned uh, communities, which the British and the French were, this is the British Labor Party, incidentally, uh, they were horrified at the idea that uh, workers were taking over factories, kicking out the managers, and running them themselves. All of this had to be destroyed. The old, the traditional society had to be restored, which in fact was. Uh, and uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, you know, uh, it was battle against the achievements of the resistance. Now, the Italians don't have a great propaganda system like the French do. Uh, so we don't, when you think about anti-Nazi resistance, you think about the French, which was important but small. You don't think about the Italians, which was huge and successful and had to be overcome and destroyed by the conquering armies. Uh, the, uh, the Greece... Uh, it was a major war, you know. Uh, the British finally got back to Greece in 1944, and uh, Churchill uh, ordered the British army to treat it like a conquered city. It had been liberated by the resistance. The Nazis were out. The British had to move in and reconquer it. Uh, when the British couldn't suppress it, they were not that strong after the war. Uh, the U.S. came in and. Uh, ran a major war in which uh, you know, maybe 150,000 people or so were killed and they had to destroy the uh, structure of the resistance, peasant worker-based resistance, which also had held down large uh, Nazi armies. Well, in Yugoslavia, the T Tito's partisans uh, were a major force. You know, they pretty much liberated the place. Uh, Holland, I, I, I was interested in this topic uh, some years ago, and I, I couldn't find any information about Holland. So I asked a Dutch friend, who maybe you know, Hans Koningsberger, um, who was active in the Dutch resistance, and I asked him what it was like and during the war. He told me, he said everybody was, there was no collaboration, he said everybody was fighting with the resistance. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of skeptical after what I'd read, so I, I asked him to check it out. And, he, he happened to be going to Amsterdam that summer, so he, he said he would investigate. When he came back, he told me he'd uh, 
talked to some friend of his who runs the War Museum or whatever it's called, and uh, he, he was told that um, there are secret archives uh, which aren't open to the public. This is some years ago, maybe now they are, uh, which had in it all the records of collaboration because it was necessary to construct a conception of resistance, uh, which and actually I mentioned this to a Dutch linguist friend who burst out laughing. He said his uncle was a Nazi collaborator. <laughs> so it was everybody else. But, uh, any, anyhow, one of the things that happened after the war, and it was particularly striking the way it happened in France because of this self-image of being you know, the center of culture and so on and so forth, uh, that there was a kind of a, I mean, the falsification of the history added a kind of a meretricious tone to the whole culture. It was a kind of a uh, sub-level of deception that entered into the whole way in which Western European intellectuals conceived of themselves. You know? And I think that in some subtle way entered into it. Now, these would be important topics to study. I don't think they've ever been looked at, not, not to my knowledge. So this is all you know, impressionistic speculation, but I suspect there's something to it. You know?